if I read you correctly, you're talking about no money, no credit, no borrowing, no debt, no bartering. Where's the incentive? No war, no territorial disputes, crime reduction by about 90%, the end of fear of, of uh, economic deprivation or losing your home or illnesses which you cannot afford economically to take care of. All that comes to an end. If that isn't a good enough incentive, I don't know what is. A lot of people are brought up to believe that money is a driving force that generates incentive. It also generates incentive for corruption, embezzlement, taking care of your brother-in-law, unfair practices, racial discrimination. So I'm saying that yes, money does produce incentive, but it also produces all the other factors which are generally left out. I would say the people we remember in history are not the people that made a buck or made lots of money. They are people that have given their lives to benefit the lives of other people without financial gain. So I'm saying the real people that we admire are the people who did public works, not because of monetary incentive. I'm afraid of people that do things for money. I don't feel secure about it. What about human nature? I think that environment shapes values and behavior. Genetics, to a certain extent, set the propensity, but they do not give us a value system. Genetics is not responsible for greed, bigotry, racism, prejudice, all that is learned. So if you don't alter the condition that generates that, I don't see a solution. What the Venus Project advocates is the redesign of our culture so that those conditions no longer exist. And what about scarcity? Can that be eliminated? Do we have enough resources to satisfy the growing population in the world? Yes, today we have more than enough. And it's incontestably proven that we have more than enough. It's just that the way we manage our resources are wasteful. We change the design of automobiles every year so that people will buy new cars. We change the spring fashion, the fall fashion, the winter fashion, so you will buy things and constantly be involved in purchasing things. So we will engineer, innovate, and make newer things designed not to wear out and break down. What does the Venus Project represent? One world working in one direction, the intelligent management of resources and upgrading the standard of living for all the world's people with profits to none and service to everyone. So how do you envision a transition into this type of system? If you keep bringing in machines and replacing human beings, the majority of people throughout the world will not have the purchasing power to buy goods or services. This will bring an end to the old monetary system. I would see economic collapse as the only system that'll bring people around to say that, gee, uh, I see that the people I've elected into political office are not competent enough to get us out of this problem. And they'll be looking for other possible alternatives. The more people know about it, the more likely that it may be installed. The Venus Project does not say this is what the future will be. All it says is this is what the future can be. And that is what the Venus Project has to offer. The methodology of how to achieve a higher standard of living for all the world's people without the creation of uniformity or standardization or, or subservience to, to an elite form that manages government. What problems stand in the way of us implementing this type of transition? Traditions, habits, indoctrination, propaganda. We are all propagandized to accept our system as the best system. We are all given uh, stories about the culture, our cultural history, and which has left out the detrimental aspects. All societies tend to support the dominant values of that society. There's no such thing as an objective society. If there were, you couldn't have German scientists 
American scientists, British scientists, Dutch scientists, French scientists working in serving their government. Uh, real science has no allegiance to government. It only has allegiance to methodology.